The Kaiser class were the third of four classes of German dreadnoughts prior to the construction of the Bayern class super dreadnoughts. As the German naval laws at this point were authorising new ships to ostensibly replace older vessels, they were listed as replacements for older pre-dreadnought era coastal defence ships, and thus were built under the Ersatz names for the old Hildebrand, Heimdall, Hagen, Agir and Oden. Although they represented an incremental improvement over the previous class generally, the Kaisers also saw quite a number of firsts for German battleships. Gun calibre had gone from 11 to 12 inches in the Nassau's going on to the Helgolands, and the Kaisers would retain the 12-inch gun, but it would be in a more efficient layout. Whilst the Helgolands had retained the hexagon layout of the Nassau's, giving an 8-gun broadside for 12 guns installed, the Kaisers would only carry 10 guns in 5 twin turrets, but thanks to two of these being placed in a super-firing pair aft, with one turret forward and the last two N echelon amidships, the new design could still maintain a general 8-gun broadside, with 10 guns on broadside possible on very limited bearings, albeit at something of a risk of blast effects disabling the other N echelon turret. Early design studies had looked at retaining 12 main guns for a 10 and potentially 12 gun broadside, with a super firing pair of turrets forward as well, but this had proved unaffordable. This layout was permitted by the use of turbine engines for the first time in a German dreadnought, which gave a designed half knot increase in top speed on roughly the same just under 28,000 shaft horsepower as the Helgolands, with this driving three shafts but using up far less volume internally, the smaller engine spaces allowing for the cross-deck firing capability and the aft super-firing turrets. The ships would carry a variety of turbines from foreign and domestic manufacturers, with Prinz Regent Luitpold being slightly different, as the intention was to fit her central shaft with a diesel engine, but as this was not actually ready in time, it was never fitted, which left her a little bit slower than her sisters, who despite all being designed for 21 knots were actually able to exceed this to varying degrees, at least whilst they were on trials with good coal. The ship's armament consisted of the aforementioned five twin turrets carrying 12-inch guns, along with a secondary battery of 14 casement-mounted single 5.9-inch guns, eight 88mm guns in single mounts, and five submerged torpedo tubes, one at the front and two on each side, with the stern tube from previous designs being deleted. This would undergo some revision during their careers, with the surface action 88mm guns being replaced by a smaller number of anti-aircraft 88mm weapons, and the main guns being modified for additional elevation, which allowed a fairly substantial increase in maximum range. Another improvement over the Helgolands was moving the secondary battery from the main deck to the upper deck level, which allowed them to be used in less than ideal sea conditions. Yet another area of improvement could be found in the ship's armour. The belt had a maximum thickness of 13.8 inches, a deck had a, with a maximum thickness of 3.9 inches, and the turrets carrying slightly less armour than the belt at 11.8 inches, the odd decimals being the result of the Germans using the metric system, as the 350mm belt, 100mm deck and 300mm turrets were much more rounded figures when you used that particular set of measurements. Thanks in part to the turbines, range also jumped by almost 50%, from 5,500 nautical miles to almost 8,000 nautical miles. All of these improvements came at the cost of only just under 2,000 tonnes more displacement, reflecting the huge weight savings inherent in the switch to turbine propulsion and the cascading benefits that this granted. Five ships would be built, Kaiser, Friedrich de Grosse, Kaiserin, Prince Regent Liedpolt, and König Albert. All bar Kaiser were laid down in 1910, with the first ship starting life in October 1909, and were launched through 1911 and 1912, and entered service with the High Seas Fleet between summer 1912 and summer 1913, thus all being in service prior to the start of World War I. Friedrich de Grosse had a slightly different superstructure, as she was fitted as a flagship. During the war, they were present during the first scouting group's bombardments of Scarborough, Hartlepool, Whitby, Yarmouth and Lowestoft, 
as part of the covering forces of the high seas fleet, although they didn't engage any targets during these operations. Their big day would of course be Jutland. König Albert would be the only fully worked up German dreadnought to miss out on the event as it was in dock for maintenance at the time, and the other four would form part of 3rd Battle Squadron along with the Newark Koenig class, with the latter taking the lead. As such, in the vanguard of the German fleet they would see a fair bit of action, getting off a few salvos at the battlecruiser force and second light cruiser squadron before getting fully involved in the destruction of HMS Warrior and HMS Defence, and the majority of the attempts to put down HMS Warspite. Indeed, it was Kaiser who fired the shell that jammed Warspite's steering gear, albeit Kaiser would also be the only ship in the class to take damage, sustaining two hits but only suffering one man wounded as a result. The rest of the war would see the class deployed to the Baltic to try and force the Russians out of the area and back into their own harbours, along with the occasional foray into the North Sea. During the Baltic operations, they would primarily provide covering fire against ships and shore batteries in order to enable other German forces to carry out operations. The end of the war saw the class interned with much of the High Seas Fleet in Scapa Flow, and all of them would subsequently be scuttled, Friedrich de Grosse and König Albert having the somewhat dubious honour of claiming first and second place in the order of sinking with all of the wrecks being salvaged between 1929 and 1937 and taken away to Rosseth for breaking up. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.